Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Marwan Sadi, and uh, I am second year PhD student. So uh, the presentation is about the methodology of the Ferris empirical chapter of my research, which is an empirical analysis of oil rent exchange rate and technical model of the Dutch disease. So the presentation will cover introduction, literature review, research aim and objectives, research contributions, research methodology, including empirical models, data description and estimation techniques. So generally nature resources, including oil, gas, diamond, mineral, or <coughs> are very important for economic growth. Because natural resources first can attract foreign direct investment, second, natural resources create jobs, third, natural resources reduce poverty, fourth, natural resources increase country saving, fifth, <coughs> some countries they use revenues or income of national resources as investment for another sector, which might be uh, human capital or manufacture. So there are many resources, rich countries have benefit or advantage from national resources for their economy. As a great example, Norway, Canada, New Zealand, United Kingdom, all of these are rich in natural resources and have had benefit <coughs> of the national resources for their economy. So, however, in the last, uh, uh, in the last two decades, Several studies have examined the relationship between natural resource and economic growth. So the relationship was negative. So which has referred to literature as resource cares phenomena. So the literature <coughs> has defined the resource cares phenomenon as the economic of some resource rich countries underperforming to those poor and national resources. So in other words, some rich country national resources have lower economic growth or GDP per capita comparing to countries that have less national resources. A great example, if you look for example, Angola, Saudi Arabia, and Venezuela, and Nigeria as well, they are rich in national resources in the oil or diamond or so on. Have lower economic growth and GDP per capita when you compare it to countries that, that have less national resources, have less oil. For example, Japan, Korea, China, and Singapore. What's the reason behind that? First, lower, institu lower institutional quality. Some rich countries, national resources have less institutional quality, which is, uh, they have high level of corruption, rent seeking, uh, they have uh, lack of uh, equal income dis distribution among society, for example, which might uh, <laughs> lead further to conflict or a civil war between different religion or different ethnicities. The second reason is lack of a human capital investment. So some rich countries, natural resources or oil countries, they are confident or optimistic. Oil sector is very important than uh, human capital could be uh, human capital investment, uh, uh, education or uh, health sector. That's the reason why rich country and natural resources, they ignore spending on the human capital, mainly education and health sector, which is very important for economic growth. The, uh, <coughs> the third reason is Dutch disease theory, which is my focus in my presentation. However, low institutional quality and lack of human capital investments are part of my thesis as poor empirical chapter, which can be presented somewhere else on the future or next year here. Dutch disease. The Dutch disease sounds Dutch as Dutch in Netherlands. <laughs> yeah, but Dutch disease, the phrase together refers to refers to negative effect of the large uh, gas discovery on the Netherlands and the economic of Netherlands. So after Netherlands in, uh, in 1957, Netherlands discovered a large field of gas, which negatively affected the economy rather than positive. So the theory was introduced by Corden and Neri, uh, 1984. So 
how did the negative affect appear in Netherlands? So uh, through two like key economic perspectives. One, appreciation of the real exchange rate. So the currency of Dutch was really like appreciated or very expensive, which discouraged export to other countries. The second shift or movement of capital and labor from uh, non-oil sectors, service, agriculture, and uh, manufacture to the oil sectors. So how did the, the Dutch disease happen? So the theory suggests that there are two mechanisms or two consequences can lead to Dutch disease. The first one referred to resource movement effect. The second is building effect. So the first one, resource movement effect. So oil booms, oil booms, which means like uh, the growth of the oil sector. Oil boom happened through increased oil price or when the country discover new field of the oil or national resources or improvement of the technology. That's what happened oil boom or the growth of the oil sector. So increase <laughs> oil boom to lead to increased marginal production, which means production. In the oil sector. So <laughs> we need to high, higher labor demand in the oil sector. Higher labor demand in the oil sector leads to higher wages in the oil sector. So higher wages in the oil sector will attract or will encourage labor or worker from service manufacture and uh, agriculture to move the oil sector because they have higher wages. This is called resource movement effect. The second spending effect. So additional or extra money that received from the oil sectors need to uh, receive can be <laughs> uh, received by the oil sector by government or by individual society needs to uh, more expenditure. So uh, more expenditure in the safer sectors. So since the price of the safer sector determined inside the economy compared to the price of manufacture or uh, oil sector which are determined outside the economy, the price of production of the surface sector increases, which leads to appreciate the local currency or the local currency becomes more expensive. So the labor and the manufacturer will move again to the surface sector because the surface sector have higher a surface sector has higher production and higher wages. So labor in the agriculture and manufacturing sector will move again to to uh, surface sector. <clears throat> so what's the consequences or the effects of the Dutch disease? Resource and output will increase in the oil sector and labor will move to the oil sector from manufacture, well, then the production in the manufacture and agriculture will fall, which have negative effect on the economy, the, which has referred to Dutch disease. The last, uh, the second one, change in the service sector and determined. So the empirical evidence of the Dutch disease. So <laughs> this study has supported the theory of the Dutch disease. He examined the relationship between oil runs and agricultural sectors in the Middle East countries. So he supported uh, the Dutch disease theory. However, this study is rejected Dutch disease in Ghana so uh, uh, they found that a real exchange rate is not, uh, is not appreciation would depreciate it. So industrial and agricultural sector doesn't fall or labor doesn't move to the oil sector. That's the reason why uh, uh, this study is rejected the Dutch disease theory. The research aim. The research aims to examine and briefly the challenge of the Dutch disease phenomena in the oil rich country and how it can be avoided. Objective, this objective of the chapter, not objective of the whole thesis, I'm just saying. Uh, the first objective to examine Dutch disease hypothesis that boom in the oil sector cause appreciation in the real exchange rate. The first objective reflects the spending effect. I need to know if the oil appreciate the real exchange rate or not. The second, to investigate and back Dutch disease, the competitive manufacturing sector and its subsector additional to agricultural sector over oil boom era. So 
The second, I need to know of the, like the production of the surface and the effect of the production of the surface and manufacturer and agricultural sector. The third, which uh, reflect the resource movement effect. This one reflect the first mechanism, specific effect. This one, the second mechanism, resource movement effect. So the third uh, objective to make appropriate policy, I need to inform the, uh, the, <coughs> the policy maker in oil rich countries how uh, the Dutch disease theory can be avoided or can be escaped. Our research contribution. What I'm going to contribute to existing literature is I'm going to combine two effect, spending effect and resource movement effect because it will give me a clear picture about the Dutch disease theory. Previous study, they focus on one effect, either spending or either the resource movement effect, but my study, I combine two mechanisms. The second, <laughs> uh, I need <laughs> this study will uh, provide a first empirical study of the uh, effect Dutch disease on the manufacturer subsectors. We have a study that focus on one manufacturer sector as a whole. But my study is submitted to high technology and medium high technology. High technology including the research and uh, research and extension in the research and development and uh, pharmaceutical and airspace and computer and electric. That's high technology. Medium high technology includes uh, chemicals, uh, vehicle, and communication. I need to know if the manufacturer subsector are affected by Dutch disease or not. The third contribution is there have been argument about the Dutch disease. This uh, Dutch disease can be in the case, <coughs> in the case study, or can be in the regional. So, uh, at the beginning, I'm going to examine the whole panel, then I will split it, my data into groups, oil rich versus non oil rich, develop versus developed country, regional, level comparative, for example, sub Saharan Africa, European country, Asia, Middle East, and <coughs> these groups might lead to interesting and uh, significant findings. So uh, the last contribution is to inform the policy maker in oil rich countries. So that's the research methodology. My empirical models are informed by uh, these studies and informed as well by Corden and Neri, theoretical framework. So uh, the first model is exchange rate model to adjust the spending effect. That's one effect. So the first model is to examine the relationship between oil and exchange rate. I need to know if the oil appreciate the currency or not. So the model here. So in the economic language, left side refers to dependent variables, right side refer to the uh, independent variable. I refer to time period of my study, which is from 1980 to 2015. T refers to country. B here, they called PETA or coefficients. In this case, he doesn't have mean at one, uh, one variable of X equal, at the value of Y when X or X equals zero. But this one, the same PETA one, PETA or coefficient, Tell us like uh, <coughs> the degree how the independent variable affect uh, dependent variable. So uh, this one alpha country fixed effect, which refers to specific country fixed effect, can capture all variables not including in the model which might affect why. For example, since I have 141 countries, each country like uh, is various in terms of they have each country they have different institution different language different religion different that's what might affect the result this one is called gamma <laughs> it refers to time fixed time specific fixed effect 
which might uh, affect the uh, capture or value but not included here. For example, time fixed effect can capture some countries that are affected, for example, by civil war uh, through, through time. Affect, for example, by um, uh, like a strike, which might affect the production and the oil boom. That's the reason here says capture or variables, which might affect dependent variables. This one, MU, as uh, uh, what's it, what's called the error terms. Not valid, any variable not included in the model should be here. So. This is the effective exchange rate. That's my limited value. That's my key value of oil. I need to know if the oil is affect exchange rate or not. These independent variables, government expenditure, investment, productivity, which refer GDP per capita, and inflation, trade openness, net foreign assess, terms of trade, all of independent variables are informed by previous literature. This is the first effect exchange rate. Uh, the spending effect, sectoral mode to examine resource movement effect. This is the second effect to examine the relationship between oil rings and sectoral model, empirical model here. That's safe sector model. This is safe sectors. That's my dependent variable. That's my key variable oil. <coughs> this is uh, this is labor. Uh, this is labor, trade openness, and inflation, investment, government expansion. So uh, this is the real effective exchange rate, human capital, technology. All of these variables are informed by previous literature, which might influence the surface sectors. This is manufacture models, agricultural model, high technology manufacture, uh, subsector model. High technology manufacturer, subsector model, medium, high technology. So uh, <coughs> here the variable, this uh, variable description expected sign I believe I study. So uh, the expected sign for the between the and individual variable for the exchange model should be negative here according to the theory. Government expansion should be positive or negative, investment. Should be positive or negative, GDP per capita. GDP uh, could be positive or negative. That's uh, positive or negative on exchange rate. This is an inflation. And inflation and real exchange rate uh, is negative correlated. So this net foreign assets, term of trade, trade openness. Uh, this is uh, the resource movement effect models, which include surface sector. Manufacture, agriculture, high technology, medium, all of these are dependent variables. So, uh, here my key variable is oil, and I'm expected there is a negative relationship between oil and sectoral model, <laughs> uh, agriculture and manufacturers. So, here total labor force, trade openness, inflation, investment. Government expenditure, all of these variables can influence manufacture and surface sectors, which, according to the previous studies, that's the effect exchange rate, secondary school, which represent human capital, research and development, which represent uh, technology, agricultural land, which affect agriculture production. So, that description, I have 141 countries. And then, as I, uh, as I mentioned previously, I'm going to split the panel into different groups. So the data is obtained from the United Nations World Bank. So the estimation, the way how to run these models by fixed effect model with structure heterogeneity, because as I told, I have 140 countries. Each country is different regarding institution, uh, uh, religion, and uh, location, which can be captured this control and variable uh, across countries, random effect, uh, country are random. Uh, <laughs> the random effect is it's possible to include variables as gender or location. So Hashman test is is <coughs> it's, it's still us with the best model between fixed effect or random effect model. So general method of movement. 
I refer to GMM, which is the dynamic model, which uh, allows us to, to know of the previous year affect the current year. It provides more reliable outcomes that will be affected by uh, bias result. It's it used to address the alternative problem, alternative problem and the uh, climatic literature fair to omitted it by simultaneity and measurement errors. Thank you so much for listening. It's uh, very interesting for me that she is uh, However, the, the draft you sent to me is totally different from the one you presented me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, because you answered all the questions I was, uh, I was going to ask. Uh, first of all, about the characteristics of your sample, because you said you have 141 countries. Yeah. Uh, you didn't mention any characteristics about these countries in the draft I received yeah. from uh, James. So I was wondering how to compare 141 countries together. However, they are different in uh, state of development, they yeah. are different in natural uh, resources. Yeah. Uh, so you answer that, 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 that question here, actually. Um, I have another comment because yeah, I, I, did, I did like a can you go in and she's going to do a thing? It's not where I thought it was. Fair, fair, yeah. fair, fair. Anyway, uh, because I comment about your uh, contribution, because your contribution, one of, the, one of them said um, you are going to test the Dutch disease not in the whole economy but sector, sectors and subsectors, which is a yeah. uh, uh, good contribution. And you are using two models one for the uh, uh, spending effect and one for source movement effect. However, I found other study using the two models, so this is not a um, major contribution. You have to be careful, they say, uh, the first study to study this or investigate this, you have to be careful about the wording because I found other studies using the two models in one study, so you have to be careful about this. Uh, number two is about objectives, you say uh, you have three objectives. Um, uh, the first one to to study the effect of Dutch disease on exchange rate appreciation, mm. um, and you can you can. Uh, Which one? Yeah, this is this is uh, oh. the introduction I have received from you. The two, right? Can yeah. you carry on because this is a bit yes. Um, oh. Back yes, yeah, this is the objectives. So first objective is to in, in the investigate the impact of Dutch disease in the local currency appreciation as it's clear. And the second one about the effect, the effect of Dutch disease on the three sectors, the manufacturing, agriculture yeah. and services. My question you can see in the top here, why you didn't take the whole economy, not sector by sector? So just because I found others, I think I examined one PhD in here in the school yeah. about the effect of Dutch disease in the whole economy growth. So why you didn't? Yes, it is good to find the effect of Dutch disease on sectors and subsectors, which is contribution for you. But you have to take the effect of Dutch disease in the whole economy measured by growth or export growth. You know, this is from the future as well. Yeah. Uh, if you if you move on to the following slide. Uh, this is the two models you mentioned. The yeah. first one, um, you didn't mention inflation in the version you sent to me, but you mentioned yeah. it in your presentation, because I was wondering how to study the effect of uh, Dutch disease in exchange rate appreciation and you ignore inflation rate. Yeah. So I asked you to take it into account here, which you did already in your presentation, so uh, you can ignore this one. About investment you mentioned in the model, I don't understand what you mean by investment. Are you, do you mean uh, foreign direct investment? No, 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 uh, local investment. So you didn't mention that. Any de description for the variable in yeah. the draft I have received, you know, any description at all. So I just wanted to explain this. Um, and my, my comment again is about second model, about uh, uh, resource movement effect. Uh, I'm still convinced to say you have to take the effect on the whole economy, yeah. not only sector by sector. Yeah, I mean, I can have a growth. Yes. I will answer that. 
First of all, I will finish and then you and leave you to. Yeah. Uh, can you move one? Finish? Yeah, that, that look, this is my question about your countries because the country is 141. However, the Dutch is this about oil rich yeah. companies. Yeah. However, this 141 are not rich in oil. Yeah. So, how to compare rich oil countries with non oil rich countries? What do you explain it in your presentation? Um, they don't have rich, they don't have touch disease if they are not uh, oil rich uh, uh, countries. What you said, you have different institutional uh, uh, characteristics or something like that. So, that actually my comments about the countries, about how to compare between 141, how to group them. Yeah, and based on what, what you answer this yeah. in your presentation, yeah. um, that's it for me. So I need to answer uh, your question yourself, why you didn't put the hand drop. If you look at the theory of the paper which was by Corden and Neri, he examined my culture sector and agriculture rather than economic growth as a well. whole. That's it. Dutch is, but when you mention it in, in your case, for example, the examination between oil and climate growth, it will really affect and resource scarce. But Dutch disease is part of the resource scarce. Dutch disease works on many natural sectors, agriculture and stuff. But resource scarce, as I mentioned here, generally focus on the growth as a whole. Uh, that's the difference between Dutch disease and The and definition of Dutch disease is about the effect of this on the growth of the economy. No, I need to correct the definition here. The negative effect of yeah. national gas discovery on Northern Netherlands on manufacturing sector, following by a change in the real change rate. Yes. But if someone imagine, for example, anyone like appreciation, negative effect on the um, I guess, or something obvious, you have to make it up on the plan. But that's the reason the difference between it. I resource scarce is generally the negative effect of national resource on the plan. Yeah. So, just a question. So, a country can be oil rich, but doesn't need to have a Dutch business. Oil rich. Doesn't need to have. Yeah. Oil-rich country doesn't have to have Dutch disease. Look, I'm saying, uh, not uh, I, as as I mentioned, that's a sub-rich country national resource are prepared from the uh, national resource. For example, Norway, Canada, and United yes. States, all of these. So, wouldn't that be enough to compare oil-rich country without Dutch disease and oil-rich country with Dutch disease? Instead of comparing all these countries, well, some of them have oil, some of them doesn't have oil. And a bit more, uh, your question again. Yeah. So you are comparing 141 countries. No. Some, yeah, yeah. Some with oil, some without oil, right? Yeah. Just because of the Dutch disease. It wouldn't be enough to prove that you have some countries with without Dutch disease or some oil rich country without Dutch disease comparing with oil rich country with Dutch disease. That's enough rather than all of these So you can take, say, for example, Saudi Arabia, Libya as rich, rich, uh, oil rich countries with, with Dutch disease, comparing with, say, United States or United Kingdom, they have rich resources, uh, or they are rich resource countries with no Dutch disease. Yeah. Rather than comparing the whole 141 countries. That's what I... Yeah, well, yeah I'm doing that to do this. I'm doing, for example, oil rich, not oil rich. Oil rich, developing, not oil rich. Oil yeah. rich with Dutch disease and oil yeah. rich with no yeah. Dutch disease. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you don't need to talk 141. Yes. So you will make your life easier. Yeah. Yeah, I will I function on this. Yeah. And using 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 gross as the one variable rather than running three three models for each. Yeah, system. but if I use gross, it's gonna be a different story. You don't need Dutch disease, it's gonna be a source case. Here. The, as I mentioned here, for example, instu lower institution quality and lower human capital are Dutch disease are indirect negative effect. But when you leave oil and economic growth, it's direct effect. Okay. We got the idea now. Because the economic growth can come from somewhere else. Exactly. 
can be from manufacturer, can be from material, to be from institution. Many sectors is affected by manufacturing, service, agriculture, with the main sector in the whole production. Yeah, we're still in front of that institution. Human capital and trade, all these are key value to them. That could be added to the model. Okay, so the independent value. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. All right, I have a question. My question is okay. The world of just disease from the Netherlands, they have prosperity, economic prosperity, before they just done, before the oil. When the oil come, Not came, oil, gas. Gas, before the gas. Then when, when the gas came, then the economic growth dropped. That's what happened. And that's how this disease was defined. However, in the case of places like Nigeria, it's not like, okay, they are, doing, they are doing better before the oil. They actually did better after the oil. So, so I don't understand how that is Dutch disease because it's not because it, can, it it's just something that's um, that was established in Netherlands, and now people are just generalizing it globally. To countries that have different characteristics from the its origin. If assuming Nigeria is a country that's prospering prior to oil, and now they found oil and they're doing bad, then you can probably match the as okay, probably this disease can be applied in Nigeria case. But I still don't believe most of these countries that are just people applying this disease are to have those disease. Because my argument is um, take Nigeria. Take its neighboring countries. Still, Nigeria is growing better than its neighboring countries that doesn't have oil. What kind of can I give an example? Okay. That's Nigeria. Yeah. Don't compare it with Nigeria. Huh? Don't compare it with Nigeria or why not? <laughs> why not? Of not it's Niger. It's a good other country. You go um check your um west mm. is being republic. Yeah. Both doesn't have any yes significant oil and gas, but they are relying sometimes on subsidy from Nigeria. And you call Nigeria with those disease. And it's subsidizing those countries. So if it's actually um, a cause in, in a way, those countries that doesn't have the disease should be prospering. But they are so probably it could be something else, or it could have identified another disease for those countries. Then the justice. I'm just like my caveat on the application of a single phenomenon in a, a literally advanced European country to apply in five underdeveloped countries or developed countries. So yeah, yes, that's my grammar. So that's my daily like okay, why 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 even justice in these countries? Because what do you mean? What countries? Nigeria, Saudi Arabia, and yeah. France. Because they are rich in oil. Uh, but Saudi Arabia is still better at when it found oil than before it found oil. While Dutch disease, Netherlands are doing better for the oil. When they found oil, they, they crash. But Saudi, Saudi, Saudi is better after oil. So I don't see the disease. How do you know? But, but how old is Saudi Arabia comes before oil? Yeah, yes. yeah. Well, not at the same as manufacturing and oh. agricultural sector. Are they, all, they are doing good or bad? It's killing other sectors. Yeah. 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 What I'm saying, uh, yeah. 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 Look at Libya. IT, IT, five percent from GDP from the oil. Same for Syria. Look at this one here. Look at when, when, when the country is. Let, let me explain to you this. When the country ignores spending on the manufacture and agriculture, will affect the human capital as well. Because. This is Nigeria is better. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm saying, it's not saying about pro this pro country. probably because there are some countries that will be oil. Probably you can take oil out, they're not going to prosper. There's no evidence that they're going to prosper without oil. Because there are countries that are doing terribly bad. The first countries in this world doesn't have oil. And they're not good. they're not anybody. They, they, they still have, they have this institutional quality, they still have they have human capital. Um, so taking the oil out. Probably it's like a solution. If you take the, the oil out, say, from one country like Libya or Saudi Arabia, nothing else is left. Yeah. 
because 85 percent of the GDP in this country is coming are coming is coming from the oil. So if you remove oil, you don't have uh, countries. But this is called Dutch production base. If you depend heavily on one as a natural source, resource. Thank you. Ah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah go ahead. Uh, just notice your first model is about real change, real effective change money. That's essentially its determinants. Do you take into consideration of capital uh, structures, capital controls? Because that's quite effective. Real effective change money as well. Capital? Capital controls. Yeah, because that's investment. That's investment. Yeah. Yeah, capital investment. controls it is talking about whether government imposes constrictions, restrictions, um, controls. Oh, you mean I put trade openness? You mean, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's not trade openness. It's restriction. Restrictions on yeah. the government restriction of government control and capital. Yeah. Do you take that into? I, I've never seen this uh, variable and the real for this. Yeah, because there are many business days, you know, but I've never seen this. Uh, it was not very common, uh, this variable for me. Yeah, capital. I think because uh, the most important independent in this model is quite is quite great. So it doesn't care about the other uh, capital movement or capital restriction. Yeah, it's, not, it's not the determinants of the exchange rate. But that would be a but I want to put a question. 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 I want to put I think I've proven the most important variables are informed by previous literature. And uh, I have. We really have to think about it. Yeah, and I have seen many papers that, uh, uh, that is the, the key variable that didn't make sense right here. Yeah, that's fine. Time is up. It's hard. Very good question. I mean, I have two things to say. I mean, because it's very last thing. Uh, let's say this. Let's say that the economic impacts of. That's what we call it. Nigeria, as a